Where is the father? Who is the father? My brothers of Christ's Redeemer Parish, as we celebrate this Father's Day, we're called to reflect upon this most important question, this question of fatherhood that in many ways is at the heart of our vocation. As we look around at our world today, many critics would say that the father seems to be absent. Absent from mothers who struggle to raise their children by themselves. Absent from brothers who are divided from each other along lines of race or politics. Absent from families across the world ravaged by an unseen disease. How do we respond to these critics, for whom the seeming absence of the Father seems to call our entire faith into question? But it is our faith itself, it is Christ himself, who responds to these doubts about the Father. The very way that we build our churches responds to these doubts. In the seeming absence of the Father, we discover a presence that is more powerful than anything we could have hoped for or imagined ourselves. When you walk into our beautiful church here at Christ's Redeemer Parish, you may, no you may notice that there is no image, no visual image of God the Father. Does this mean that the Father is absent? No. The image that our eyes are drawn to immediately upon entering the church is the image of the crucified Son. And it is in that image, the image of the crucified Son, who perfectly reveals who the Father is and how the Father continues to be present in our world. This most recent Friday, our church the Universal Church celebrated the great feast day of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And in the Gospel for that feast, Jesus says, No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Jesus then says, Come to me all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. It is in the gentle, humble heart of the Son that the gentle, humble heart of the Father is fully revealed. It is through the wounds of the heart of Jesus, pierced by our own sins, that the love and mercy of the Father is poured out for us. It is through the Son that the Father says, Come to me, and I will give you rest. When we say that the heart of the Son, and therefore the heart of the Father, is gentle and humble, we're not talking about a personality type. Neither are we talking about someone who has no backbone. As St. Francis de Sales once wrote, Jesus himself is the gentleness of God. And the gentleman saint also wrote that nothing is so strong as gentleness and nothing so gentle as real strength. In his earthly life, the gentle, humble Jesus displayed an unwavering firmness to the truth, to the Father, to which all of us men must aspire. He never denied, he never renounced who he was, who the Father was, despite all temptations to the contrary, even though this led him to the cross. But what Jesus did denounce, what he did renounce, was the path of hatred, resentment, of destructive anger, which can be so subtle a temptation that the wicked like to hook us with, that the tempter, the enemy, likes to trip us up with when we're trying to live a path of justice, holiness, 
and righteousness. In a recent pastoral letter to the men of his diocese, Bishop Thomas Olmsted of Phoenix writes that the vocation of fatherhood is to reveal and to relive on earth the very fatherhood of God. Let's let that sink in again. The vocation of fatherhood is to reveal and to relive on earth the very fatherhood of God. And Bishop Olmsted continues, The question for every man is not, am I called to be a father, but rather, what kind of father am I called to be? All of us, in some way, are called to be fathers, to image, to reveal, to relive on earth the fatherhood of God. What a calling! What a most high calling! And frankly, it can be an intimidating calling. Especially today, in our quest to strive to be who we are and be that well as men of God, in our striving to become good fathers, there's no shortage of snares that the enemy likes to lay out for us. The path we must walk indeed seems to be narrow. On the one side is laxity and irresponsibility. On the other is beating ourselves up endlessly for our inadequacies. On the one side is a stern rigidity. On the other side is a permissive self-indulgence. On the one side is indifference in the face of injustice and wrongdoing, and on the other is an overzealous self-righteousness. It's a hard path, and we can't do it alone. But the good news is, Christ himself has walked this difficult path, and in doing so, through his own tenacity and taking hold of his identity as son, of his relationship with the Father, and never letting go of that, he shows us the tenacious, relentless love of the Father. Through his own heart, Christ invites us to share in that infinite life of grace that he shares with his own Father, which he richly pours out for us through the sacraments of the Church, through prayer, through solid Christian friendships, and the life of the Christian community. And so, in response to the question of, where is the Father? We can say that the Father is everywhere that the Son is. We, as the Church, as men of God, are called to be the hands and feet of Christ to whom we have been united through baptism. And so, my brothers, take courage in your striving to be the Father that God has called each of us to be. Be not afraid. And as Francis de Sales once also wrote, do not worry about tomorrow. The same eternal Father who cares for you today will care for you tomorrow and every day. He will either shield you from suffering or give you unfailing, invincible strength to bear it. So be at peace then and put aside any anxious thoughts or imaginings. May God, the merciful Father, bless all of us through his Son and Spirit. Happy Father's Day.